So, the other day, I needed to look for a replacement for our 12-year-old washing machine, as it gave up working and was declared unrepairable. So, what criteria did I use for purchasing our new home appliance? Certainly, trust in the manufacturer or specifications featured high on my selection criteria. More importantly, I used the energy label to help reduce my environmental footprint and the cost of using that appliance during its lifetime. Find out more about how to use energy labels in your work and personal life in this video. Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. This episode looks at the use of energy labels to ensure that you can reduce your environmental footprint as well as making significant savings over the lifetime of the use of your home appliance. So, what are energy labels? Well, in 2021, the UK government has introduced new energy labels for products such as washing machines, dryers, fridges and freezers, and TVs, and have given advice on how the energy label can make it easier for you to identify the most environmentally friendly products. So, what's new, I hear you say? We've had energy labels for more than 25 years in the UK. I am sure that if you're watching this video from outside the UK or European Union, your country will also have energy ratings for home appliances too. Examples of other energy labels are the United States Energy Star, the Energide from Canada, the Australian Energy Rating Label, and the Korean energy label. So, why do we have new energy labels in the UK? Well, partly encouraged by the increased energy efficiency of products and the need to align with energy labels in the European Union, new compatible UK energy labels have been introduced. Indeed, the EU and UK energy labels follow the same design and content and could be used interchangeably. The new energy labels have done away with the older A, A+, A++ and A++++ ratings and have reset to a clearer scale running from A to G, where A is the top energy efficiency rating and the scale runs from A to G with the lowly G being the lowest rating. So, the old A++ rating is now equal to the new C rating. These changes have been made in a bid to improve the understanding and the meaning of the ratings, as well as to make way for further improvements in energy saving technology. If you're getting value out of this video, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more environmental videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So what legislation supports energy labels? Within the European Union, there is a EU regulation which sets out the framework for energy labelling. And within the UK, there is relevant Brexit legislation such as the Eco Design for Energy Related Products and Energy Information Amendment EU exit regulations for 2019 and 2020, which provide for energy labels for most products and separate legislation specific for lighting products. So how did the energy label help with my purchase? When looking at the wide range of washing machines on the UK market, the energy label helped me to compare between models and enabled me to make a better final selection for my washing machine based on environmental 
and energy efficiency over its entire life cycle. The key features of the energy label which helped me are a feature which is found in the new energy label and not on older energy labels is a QR code directly linked to the manufacturer's website so that you can access further information about the product. This QR code can be found in the top right of the label directly above the supplier's name and model identifier of the product. Just below that can be found the overall energy rating. The energy consumption is given greater prominence and is given in a unit meaningful to the product. So for my newly purchased washing machine, this was given in kilowatt hours per 100 washing cycles. Our new machine consumes 47 kilowatt hours of electricity per 100 wash cycles, or 4.7 kilowatt hours per wash. Other symbols provide information on the weight capacity for the washing load, which here is given as 8 kilograms, which is a good sized load. The length of the washing cycle, which is 3 hours and 39 minutes, a little long, but reflecting the cooler energy efficiency wash cycle, and the water consumption at 47 litres for our machine, the spin efficiency of a B rating will make sure that drier clothes come straight out of the washer rather than soaking wet. And the final category of a noise rating of A, which at 70 decibels is reasonably quiet. So what does this all mean for my purchase? Well, the new washing machine cost over £700, or about $950 US dollars. That is quite expensive for a washing machine, given that other washing machines are available on the UK market for about £200, or $270 US dollars. In a recent Which Consumer Research paper, the difference in running costs between two models could be the difference between £15 a year in energy costs for a highly energy rated machine compared with £70 annually for a more lowly rated washing machine. Assuming a 16 year lifespan, the savings in running costs between these two washing machines could be more than £800, which is quite a saving given the £500 difference in initial purchase price between the cheapest and most expensive washing machine, and the fact that this can be more than made up by the overall £600 of energy savings during those 16 years. In carbon emissions, I estimate that my new Miller washing machine consumes about 18 kilograms of CO2 equivalents each year. So another saving of about 50 kilograms of CO2 equivalents each year, or just under one ton of CO2 equivalents compared with the cheapest washing machine over the expected 16 years lifespan of the appliance. Yet another consideration for those of us trying to reduce our carbon footprint going forward. So to summarise, the new UK and EU energy labels offer advanced product and environmental information over the previous energy labels that we have been used to over the past 25 years and can help to refine our purchasing decisions whether for business or home life. If like me you are purchasing a new home appliance, consider the information on the energy label. As a more expensive purchase could save you much more in the long run of its use compared with a cheaper but less efficient appliance. Maybe one day the energy label may even be revised further to incorporate a value for the carbon emissions in the use of the product 
to enable us all to make our contributions towards a net zero future. Further information about energy labels is given in the description box below, including a link to the resources on the emsmastery.com website. If this episode has helped to advance your understanding of energy labels and how they may help with your purchase of an environmentally friendly home appliance, leave a comment in the box below if this video has helped you. Finally, please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.